Press TV's news analysis of the latest events that have rocked the Arab world. In this section, we'll be focusing on Libya. The latest news coming out of Libya is that revolutionary forces say they've pushed Gaddafi troops out of the western city of Misrata. The city has been under fire from troops loyal to the defiant leader Muammar Gaddafi. Witnesses say at least 30 people were killed with dozens of others wounded. That's while Italy has decided to increase its air power in NATO-led operations in Libya. A statement from Italian Premier Silvio Berlusconi's office says Rome will allow its air force to bomb selected military targets. Well, this comes a day after NATO warplanes targeted Libya's capital Tripoli. Meanwhile, earlier, U.S. Senator John McCain called on Washington to recognize the Libyan National Transition Council and arm it. McCain made the remarks during a visit to the city of Benghazi. However, he advised against deploying foreign troops to the North African nation. That's why the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mike Mullen, says the U.S. will not arm the revolutionaries fighting regime forces. Well, let's discuss the situation in Libya now with our panel today. We've got, uh, uh, we're joined by Chip Pitts, political commentator, joining me on the phone from Dallas. And we've got uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, former assistant secretary to U.S. Treasury, joining me via Skype from Panama City. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. I'd like to start with you, uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, if I may. Uh, doctor, there is talk about uh, Washington being advised to arm the revolutionaries. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, they are already arming them. I mean, they, they are armed. That's what's unique about the Libyan uh, revolt. It's not a peaceful revolt. It's not taking place in the capital. It's an armed revolt from the eastern part uh, of the country. And we know, for example, uh, that the CIA is involved. It's there on the ground. And so uh, they're already armed. And so how do you compare the, uh, the military intervention in Libya to the one in Bahrain? Well, of course, uh, we don't want uh, to overthrow uh, the government in Bahrain or in Saudi Arabia, uh, where both governments are uh, using uh, violence against protesters uh, because uh, they are our puppets and we have a large naval base in uh, Bahrain. Uh, we want to overthrow um, Gaddafi and Assad in Syria because we want to clear uh, China and Russia out of the Mediterranean. Uh, China has massive energy investments in eastern Libya and is relying on uh, uh, Libya along with uh, Angola and Nigeria for energy needs. And this is an American effort uh, to deny resources uh, to China just as uh, Washington and London uh, denied resources to the Japanese in the 1930s. And the interest in, uh, in, the, Sy in the Syria uh, protest, uh, which WikiLeaks uh, shows the Americans are behind, uh, we're interested in that because the Russians have a massive uh, naval base in Syria and gives them uh, a presence in the Mediterranean. And so you see that Washington is all for intervening uh, against uh, uh, Libya and uh, is putting more and more uh, pressure on uh, uh, to intervene in Syria because we want to get rid of the Russians and Chinese. And we don't uh, have <clears throat> anything to say about uh, the Saudis, how they treat protesters, or anything to say about the violence used against uh, protesters in Bahrain. So you're saying uh, the ultimate goal of attacking Libya is because of the oil factor? Well, it's not just the oil. I mean, the oil has been there a long time. It's the fact of China's penetration of Africa and, and China lining up uh, oil supplies for its energy needs. Uh, you may be aware that the uh, International Monetary Fund has released a report which says that the age of America is over, and that the American economy will be bypassed by China in five years. And uh, the United States will then become uh, the second uh, economy rather than the first. So right. uh, one of the things that uh, Washington is trying to do is to uh, block, to, to use its superior uh, military and, and strategic uh, capabilities at this time 
uh, to block China's acquisition of resources in order to make the development of the Chinese economy uh, uh, slow down, to reduce uh, the ability of China to acquire what it needs for its development. This is a major reason that the CIA has been active right. in, in eastern Libya, and it's the reason the protests uh, broke out in the east, not in the capital, like in the other uh, <clears throat> Arab countries. And it's the reason it's armed, that yes. the protesters is an armed rebellion. Yes. Now, Mr. Chippitz, uh, let's have your opinion. What do you think about the U U.S. role in Libya? How do you assess it? Well, I believe that uh, Dr. Roberts has astutely raised the larger geopolitical issues that are often neglected when looking at this. I don't think that uh, the evidence that this was a strictly humanitarian action um, was there. In fact, I, I've, I've actually been very concerned that the U.S. Seems, and NATO seems oblivious to the fact that in supposedly trying to stop a humanitarian disaster that was supposedly going to happen in Benghazi, now we're actually seeing in a self-fulfilling prophecy an escalation, a mission creep, a militarization, an intervention in a civil war that's resulting in hundreds of deaths on the ground. And they're deaths that you know, are not speculative. They're deaths that are actual. You know, women and children are being killed. And that's... Uh, you know, it, it, we actually see the possibility of a spreading conflict where we go beyond a civil war to, you know, truly Habesian, um, internecine tribal warfare in a, an environment like Libya. So once again, it seems to me, and I suspect Dr. Roberts would agree, that in the name of, you know, of humanitarianism, the U.S. is actually undermining its, its true security interests by increasing instability in the region. And Mr. Pitts, uh, how much do you think the attack on Libya is because of uh, the, uh, the, the isolation of Libya in international diplomacy, the isolation of uh, Gaddafi in particular? I think that that's actually a, a hugely significant factor. The fact that Libya was easy to attack is a factor. Um, and the fact, as Dr. Roberts pointed out, that Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, for example, are allies that we stood, are standing by. And we stood by Yemen until it became impossible uh, to do so any longer, just as we stood by Mubarak in Egypt until it became evident that he was on the way out. So uh, it makes it easy when you've got someone as, as somewhat you know, stigmatized and sort of a pariah as Gaddafi was, it's easy to attack. But what happened, you know, in addition to underestimating the, you know, the, rebel, the, the actual composition of the rebel forces, not really knowing what their capabilities were, you know, I think that we also in the U.S. underestimated the degree of support that Gaddafi has, both within his country still, but also, you know, in other countries, say in, in Africa and uh, among the participants of the African Union. And so there really wasn't the sort of, um, you know, accurate strategic analysis that needed to occur before this action was undertaken. Now, Dr. Craig, uh, Craig Roberts, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think uh, uh, Libya's diplomatic isolation was the main reason uh, for this military intervention? Uh, no, I don't think it's the main reason. Um, the main reason, I think, was uh, uh, to uh, evict China from Libya, which is uh, what is happening. You know, the Chinese had 30,000 uh, people there, and they had to uh, evacuate 29,000 of them. So uh, it's directed at, at China. It's also um, uh, a payback to Gaddafi for refusing to join the United States Africa Command, what they call AFRICOM. It became operative in uh, 2008. It was the American uh, response to China's uh, penetration of Africa. We created a, a military uh, response to that, and Gaddafi refused to participate, he said it was just an act of, uh, of imperialism trying to purchase uh, an entire continent. And I think the third reason is that <clears throat> Gaddafi or Libya uh, controls an important part of the Mediterranean coast, uh, as does Syria. And so I think uh, those two countries are just in the way of uh, American hegemony in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they, certainly the Americans don't want a powerful Russian fleet stationed there, and they certainly don't want China drawing 
energy resources. So I think that's uh, what you see. The, the the Americans, or Washington rather, Washington was caught off guard by the outbreaks of protest in Tunisia <clears throat> and in uh, Egypt, but uh, quickly learned that they could uh, use, they could hide behind Arab protests uh, to evict uh, Russia and China without confronting them directly. They wouldn't want a direct confrontation. So they've engineered these protests. Uh, we know for a fact the, that the CIA has been uh, stirring discord in eastern Libya for some time. This is not uh, speculation, it's a known fact. And the release of WikiLeaks cables show that the Americans are involved in stirring up unrest in Syria. <clears throat> right. Now, we didn't stir up the unrest in Egypt or, or Bahrain or Tunisia or Saudi Arabia. Uh, we probably are responsible for the unrest in Yemen because we were using drones and, and strikes against uh, various tribal elements. So I think that's a big difference. Uh, it's uh, the Syrian and, um, and Libyan uh, affairs uh, have American hands in them, uh, organizing the demonstrations and protests or providing money and so forth. There are always discontented people that you know, can be uh, bought and purchased and promises given. Right. Uh